Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Gupta. I welcome you on Sanjay Gupta Tech School. In this video, I am going to demonstrate a scenario related to trigger. Let's understand the requirement of this trigger scenario first. So when a case is created on any account, we need to put the latest case number on account in the latest case number field. So there, there should be a field called latest case number available on the account record. And when you create any case related to particular account, so the recently created case number should be populated under uh, this latest case number field. So here we need to create a trigger on case because we are trying to create new case. And through that case, we will be populating the case number uh, on this latest case number field. Then uh, to support trigger, we need to implement trigger handler class and then a test class for code coverage. So let's jump to developer edition org and uh, developer console. So it is already opened. And uh, now I'm going to create a case, sorry, a trigger on case. So I am clicking on file new and then I'm selecting Apex trigger. So if I click on this, okay, let me first check whether on case there is any trigger or not. So if you want to do it from the UI, so you can just search for case object. And uh, here you can see the trigger. So right now we don't have any trigger. So I'm going to create new trigger, naming it as case trigger and it will be on the case object. So I'm selecting case as an object. Now, when a, a case will be created, so we just need to populate the case number on account. So we need to update the account uh, in this uh, triggers business logic. So instead of before insert, I will be using after insert event because I just need to update the account. So once case is saved, then uh, case number I will be using to update the account records. Now here I will be calling the method. So case trigger handler dot populate latest case number. And from here I will be passing trigger dot new. So whenever we create any case or any new records, so those new records will be available in this trigger.new context variable. Now I need to create new Apex class. So its name will be case trigger handler. Right, so this is, this is part of best practice whenever you create any trigger. So don't write business logic in the trigger. Instead, create a trigger handler class and inside this class, you can write the business logic in particular method. So here I'm going to use this method public static void name of this method is populate latest case number. And here we need to receive list of case and case list, right? Now here inside this method, I'm going to write the business logic. So First of all, I'm creating a list of account named as ACC list. After creation of this list of account, I'm going to iterate a loop on case list. So all the newly created cases are available in this case list because uh, from trigger, we are passing trigger.new and this trigger.new stores all the newly created records. So one by one, each record will be available with this CS. Now, I just need to apply if condition to check whether CS.accountID is not equals to null, right? So if you create a case and if that case is not linked with any account, so in that case, there is no need to put a latest case number on the account because your case is not related to any account. So if CS.accountID is not equals to null, it means that particular case is related to particular account. So if this condition is true, then what you can do, you can create a new instance of account. 
and in this instance id you can store the cs dot account id so it means this particular account we need to modify and uh, i'm just going here under the object manager and uh, if i open the account fields and relationship so I already created a field that is latest case number. So when you will be implementing this demonstration, so remember under account object, you need to create this latest case number field of type text. So I'm going to use it here. So latest case, ACC dot latest case number equals to, and now I need to populate CS dot case number. Right. So case number will be stored in this latest case number field. And uh, now I can add this instance ACC to the list. Right. So this way, one by one, each case will be iterated and it will be checked whether it is linked to account or not. If it is uh, linked to account, then only uh, this logic will be executed. And uh, whichever account we need to update those account records will be added into this ACC list. Now, after completion of this for loop, we need to check null for this ACC list because it may possible like you created only one case and that is also not related to any account. So in that case, this ACC list will be null. So you can check ACC list for is empty. If it is not empty, then you can write update ACC list. So remember you need to write update because accounts are already there. You are creating case, but they are uh, linked to accounts which are uh, already there. So in that case, you just need to update those existing account records. So this way, uh, this case trigger handler is implemented and this method populate latest case number is having the, all the business logic. And this method we are calling here. Now, after saving trigger and trigger handler, I'm just jumping to the UI and here I'm going to open any account record, moving to related list. And here you can see uh, there is no case. If I go to details, so here latest case number is also blank. Now, if I go to related and try to create new case, So here you can see some required fields are there, status, case origin. So you can put some values and uh, just click on save. So 1039, this is the case number which is created right now. If I go to details, so here you can see latest case number is populated. Now, if I go and create one more case and also notice like in my org, these two uh, record types are created. If in your org record types are not av available, so you can just ignore because uh, these options won't be there. Uh, automatically, you will see this form. So I'm creating one more case. So it is 1040. And uh, on account record, you can see uh, latest case number is updated automatically. So that is because of this trigger that we implemented here. So now after implementation of this trigger, we need to implement its test class. So what we did, we just created a trigger on case. We created trigger handler class. Now we need to implement test class for code coverage. So now I'm going to implement that. So I am creating new Apex class. And as per part of best practice, your test class name should be uh, like case trigger handler because it is your uh, trigger handler class name and followed by test so that you can uniquely uh, identify these classes. And whenever you implement any test class, so it should be annotated as at the rate is test. Then if you define any method, so that method should also be annotated with at the rate is test. And then I'm just copying this method name, right? So what we need to do here, we need to create the data. So first I will be creating account records and then I will be creating the case record. And then I will verify whether trigger executed successfully or not with the help of this test class. So I'm going to create list of account first. 
and always remember whenever you implement your test class so always create bulk data don't test your trigger uh, by creating only one record in the test class so here i'm going to create bulk records that is why i am creating these uh, lists so i need to create list of account as well as list of case now i'm going to implement a loop so i am creating five account records and after that i can just add all these accounts into the list then i am writing insert acc list so uh, this account will be inserted now i am going to iterate on this account list that we inserted right now so five account records will be created so this second loop will be iterating five times and inside this loop i am going to create the cases right so so case cs equals to new case then we need to populate the values to the required field so if i try to create new case so here you can see status and case origin two pick lists are available which are uh, required so case status and case origin uh, let's check the api name of these fields so first time searching for status so it is status so i'm just copying it and pasting it and populating new then another one is case origin so let's check the api uh, it is origin so here i am writing cs dot origin and equals to phone right now i need to populate account id as well so this i am picking as acc dot id then adding this cs into case list and now this loop is completed and after completion of this loop what i can do i can write test dot start test inside this i can write insert case list then test dot stop test so uh, when i will be inserting case list so what will happen trigger will be initiated and uh, it will be executing the business logic so whenever you apply dml in your test class so what you can do you can just cover that into uh, start test start test and stop test so that whenever that insert dml will be performed so a fresh set of governor limits will be there so for example in your test class if you have two different methods so for uh, both the methods separate governor limits will be there if you use a uh, dml statement inside this start test and stop test right so it is not mandatory but it is part of best practice now uh, when case will be inserted so we need to check uh, on these account records whether uh, latest case number is uh, available or not so what i can do i am going to query updated account records so select id and uh, i am going to pick this api name then from account where id equals to so here we can use this acc list so acc list of zero dot id and here i need to put colon as well right so in this list 
five account records are available. So I'm just picking the first one. And this first one, latest case number, uh, I am just querying. And then I'm going to apply system dot assert equals, right? So here, what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to write case list of zero dot case number, comma, updated ACC of zero dot latest case number, right? So this way I'm trying to compare both. So case list of zero, uh, case number. So first record in this case list, uh, case number should be available in the, uh, this updated uh, accounts zero dot uh, case list number, right? So if it, match, if it matches, it means your assert is passing. So before running this test class here under the test, uh, we need to check. So I'm just going to click on run test now. Okay, it is failing. So let's check whether, uh, sorry, why it is failing. So you just need to double click. And here you can see if your test is failing. So here it is showing a session failed expected null and actual is 1014. Okay, so what is happening here? This case list of uh, zero dot case number. Okay. So basically uh, your, uh, this account is updated with the latest case number, but this uh, case list is not having that uh, case number. So uh, it means it is working fine. So what we can do, we can just query uh, these records as well, because after insertion, that case number will, will be generated. So this list is not having that case number. So what I can do, So this way, the case which is available in this case list, the first case, uh, case list 0.id, that case I am querying and that will be available here and I am querying its case number as well. So here I am writing new case list, right? So now I am going to run this test again. And here you can see it is passing. So it means both are matching this case number and the uh, account uh, field uh, latest case number, right? So earlier, why it was not matching? Because I use this case list. So uh, whenever we insert any case, uh, any list, so it will be having the newly created ID, but field values, you just need to query and then you can apply them, right? So this way I explained you like how you can implement the test class for this requirement. And there can be different ways to implement the test classes. So this is one of the way. If you find out any other way, so that is also okay. But you just need to verify your uh, trigger handler business logic is working fine or not. And uh, I hope in this video, you also understood like when uh, test class fails. So how we can check like what is failing. So this is also important like whenever your test class fails, so how you can see what is failing and uh, at which line number error is coming. Okay. So I hope this way you understood like how uh, we can implement a trigger on case along with trigger handle class and the test class as well. Thank you.